Right, welcome back, and uh, let me just welcome our very distinguished guests uh, that I'm honored to do this episode with, Dr. Hussein Amin, Professor of Journalism and Mass Communication. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, it's a very special occasion, and I guess that uh, nobody would have been able to speak better. Uh, Definitely. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, thank you. So, anyway. thank you. And uh, uh, let me, before I start with my episode, let me take how do you view the role of media that has been uh, played during the very long time it has been uh, through or throughout the past decades? In Egypt or uh, what? Definitely. What? No. No, we'll speak first in okay. Egypt and then we'll do. <laughs> All right. Please. Uh, Egypt was a leading country in introducing uh, radio and actually uh, today we celebrate the Egyptian radio, the 87th anniversary yes. of the Egyptian radio, which uh, started 1934 was the one of the big, huge uh, establishment in the United States, uh, which is called the Federal Communication Commission. Both started in 1934. Mm. Uh, under, through the years, the Egyptian radio played very effective parts in, dif in different points of history and in different points of uh, uh, challenging times that Egypt passed through. Uh, for example, uh, one of the uh, transnational services that was established uh, in the uh, when transistor was introduced was the uh, Egyptian uh, voice of the Arabs mm. and uh, it really influenced a lot of movements uh, freedom movements uh, throughout the Arab world it was very popular yes I mean I, I witnessed this because of my, my age of course but uh, I, I, the, uh, the radio transistor, uh, for the first time, uh, people used to have it uh, in different parts, uh, away from the cities, uh, in different countries, and mm. received the voice of the Arabs. So this is one major uh, influence uh, of voice of the Arabs. And then uh, the uh, uh, Egyptian also specialized uh, radio channels uh, to Africa uh, also played a very important part to link uh, Egypt with uh, the different uh, countries in Africa. Uh, this is in the past for radio. Television, as you know, started in 1960 and also uh, was uh, started with three channels. This is, uh, you know, it's, uh, it was just like any giant mm. uh, in Europe or in the United States. It's, uh, it was really huge uh, and played very effective roles in, uh, in developing the Egyptian uh, culture scene. Uh, this is when uh, a lot of uh, what we define as soft power was introduced uh, throughout the products of the Egyptian uh, television. That of course used a lot of Egyptian movies and which is based on the movie industry that was again uh, uh, introduced at the beginning of the 19th mm. century. This is, uh, it's very complicated uh, if you look at the scene, but uh, it played uh, very well because the, the Egyptian dialect in terms of the language, was was very popular, not only in Morocco but throughout the Maghreb uh, countries, up to the uh, Kuwait and Saudi Arabia and yes. the United States. So this is what uh, you know. Start, we started building on it uh, through this building in Mespiru, uh, the used to be called ERTU, the Egyptian Radio and Television Union, now changed to be the National uh, Media Council. Yes the Egyptian uh, public broadcaster uh, with different tasks. Uh, however, uh, in uh, uh, 1990, uh, hmm, 1986, 
Arabsat 1A was, uh, was established. And in 1990, uh, the first country to utilize the S-band of Arabsat was Egypt during the, uh, the Gulf War. Uh, also, companies like uh, uh, CNE, Egypt uh, uh, News uh, Network, uh, uh, also was established at the time, and the only uh, tele uh, television channel that uh, started to feed all Arab news bulletins was the Egyptian satellite channel. That was 1990. Uh, I can talk more about details, but I don't think I don't want to bore you with the details. Uh, there, uh, it's uh, not boring at all. It's very interesting to know how we were the pioneers. No, it's about the war and how we, you know, we we, we had our transmitter uh, established with the, and how we broadcast, uh, you know, news from home to the the Egyptian army. Uh, uh, that was going, uh, you know, in Kuwait to liberate Kuwait. Yes. And uh, very interesting it is. Uh, but, you know, at, uh, at the early of the 90s also we started uh, looking into establishing the Egyptian uh, satellite, hmm. uh, Egyptian satellite, uh, Nilesat, that uh, for the first time depended on uh, digital technology allowing, you know, the merge of not only tens but hundreds yes. of television channels, having a great impact on the Arab world. Mm. Uh, so uh, the combination of Arabsat and Nilesat, there are thousands of television channels really playing, you know, all kinds of uh, rules with regard to promoting the culture, values, and uh, you know, providing news and information, entertaining the Arab people, and uh, playing you know very significant roles with regard to promoting you know different kinds of aspects mm. uh, that related to sports, to women, to children, and so on and so forth. Okay, so now we are in 1990. Egyptian, the first uh, Egyptian satellite was uh, was launched in uh, 20, 28th of April. 1998, okay? And ever since we've been witnessing the birth of a lot of television uh, channels. In 1998 also there was a task force was uh, composed of, uh, you know, some uh, really pioneers uh, that put together all the Nile television uh, networks. Uh, this is once in, in, in 1998. Yes. They said, but uh, you know, I don't want to talk about the names and their importance because um, many of the audiences they will not uh, relate to the uh, to the people. But yes. they are excellent, wonderful, talented, hardworking people. Uh, also, at the beginning of the 90s, this channel, Nile TV, was born uh, through the APCT conference. That we thought that it would be important to have, you know a television channel that started on UHF. You thought it would have been important? <laughs> yes. Thought it then? <laughs> well. And no. today? Yes. Tonight? What, what about today and tonight? It is How the, important do you see it is the role that... Yes, it, it is, is important. Continue. You think it's not important? No, no, no. You? In fact, I do. Okay. But it's just that we thought and then how about now? now it's important is... because of the people who attended the, uh, the conference. We yes. wanted a tool to inform them. It's an international conference, so big at the time. And we, didn't, uh, we, did, it, we did not think that it's going to be a satellite uh, station. It, it, it was on ultra-frequency, yes, UHF. Indeed. So it's just covering the conference. Okay? Uh, it's not in terms of coverage, but the covering the activities of the conference yes. on the ultra frequency. However, since we realized the importance of it and we can do it, it started to broadcast in 1993 and up to Nilesat. Once we developed the uh, the cadres necessary 
So we started the uh, Nile TV uh, on Nile side, and also a French service that followed, and a Hebrew service. Yes, indeed. But uh, later on, the Hebrew is not included. However, Nile TV in English and in French, they still uh, play <coughs> uh, important role when we talk about uh, uh, approaches like uh, uh, cultural diplomacy, uh, public diplomacy, and how we can win the hearts and minds of people outside uh, of this country, uh, whether in Asia or in Europe or in the United States. So uh, again, maybe uh, 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 in terms of reach, it's a little bit uh, needs to be boosted as well as uh, you know uh, upgrading the services, but it's still. Uh, it's an Egypt arm to, uh, to reach out for those who are uh, a second, uh, you know, uh, uh, citizens of the of, of, uh, second generation uh, in, in the United States and in Europe and in Asia, but, you know, with reference to their uh, home, homeland, Egypt, and therefore they would like to know uh, more information about it and you providing it. Uh, them with, uh, with the service. Now, um, uh, this is again, it's a, uh, again, it's a, there is a, Nile TV is with great potential, uh, and uh, the work of the, of the decision makers and the work of the people who are working in Nile TV must convert this potential into reality. Well, so, we hope so. Uh, you know, we'll very much to full capacity. So. Uh, in addition to this, there were, of course, thematic channels uh, that was uh, introduced uh, and uh, was upgraded by, uh, by members uh, of ERTU. Mm. Uh, and then uh, NILESAT, uh, the second satellite, uh, was launched and uh, they are really ca carrying a lot of services. Uh, these services, uh, maybe 1,250 channels, this is the latest that I get. Uh, a, a great development that uh, concurrently happened is the establishment of the media city, the media production city, which is feeding the, uh, and located next to the Egyptian Nile site, and uh, it is important to say that it, the feeding, uh, feeding the, uh, the Nile set was content. Mm -hmm. Content is very important. And right now there is a call by the Egyptian president, uh, President Abfat to, uh, uh, to go through digital transformation. Yes. We spoke about history. Yeah. And we're speaking about today. All right. Um, we oh, are. It's in, a good point to stop here. Yes. Yeah. Because today, it's totally different. We're speaking about media that has lots of tools, uh, that is becoming uh, uh, of uh, such very uh, negative and very positive aspects. Mm. Uh, how do you view the media today, and how do you view the scene of the media with all the channels that are uh, that uh, exist, with all the uh, the tools that it has? Because media is not just the the the, the radio and television; it's also the uh, uh, the apps, the social uh, media, the every uh, thing is becoming or is taking us into a small village. How do you view the very challenging? mission of the media today you're putting all, to, all things together you know i'm trying I mean, because we, a, we, we i, I have limited uh, time okay. so i'm trying to all right get so we we'll make it we we'll make it easy okay we'll make it easy to people there is some positive things that are happening this is for sure yes media is not only governmental media or state media yes. no media is independent media and private media Yes, indeed. Okay, and social media because we're talking about citizen journalism and you know uh, other aspects related to social media. Right now, it's growing yes. and it's a good part of the sea, the media sea. So, 
today is this, when we say celebrating, we're not celebrating the people in this building only. No. No, we're celebrating everybody working in Egyptian media. Indeed. Okay? And it's so diverse. It's so diverse. That's why you're saying to the far left, to the far right, the right, or I'm, I don't want to say negative, but I'm going to make it easy to people to understand. Media has a very strong relationship with, with national security. Okay? Mm -hmm. when, a, when a country passed through two revolutions and you have uh, certain elements are uh, uh, threatening the state from outside, you, you take the Nile, for example, uh, and the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the dam that mm. the Ethiopians are building, this is a threat. When you go to Sinai, there is another threat. When you go to Libya, there is a threat. And when you have this, a situation like this, you need to, ha to have some sort of uh, position. Mm. I'm not saying control, a position, a strong position. That's why you need to uh, cluster, put together, mm. or merge, hmm? merge uh, uh, companies through ownership, and it happened, by, by the way, it happened in many countries in Eastern Europe, in the, um, in, in the United States. Mm. Uh, when, you, when you look at the major players who, who came together uh, to have a, sh a good share of the market position, like CNN, Warner Brothers, um, uh, American Online, this is, this is, this is a three uh, uh, top very strong players uh, they, they merged. Why they merged? They merged because they wanted to have a bigger share of the market. So it's the same thing over here. When you say negative things, hmm? and you say, you know, a lot of media, especially in social media, start, you know, from the inside because there is no control. You know, we don't, we don't have control over, over the internet. And this is, by the way, it's an international debate. Actually, this is one of the negative aspects I was yeah. speaking about. Yeah. So, uh, in this sense, when, when we look at countries, when there is no threats, you will find them relaxed. We look at countries with there's no threats, they will find the freedom of, of the press and the freedom of expression is oh. wonderful. But over here in Egypt, we are growing with a reasonable rate, okay, with a reasonable rate, and the position of certain private and independent companies together started to create clusters in addition to the public broadcasters that must be developed because it's the backbone of uh, the people in okay. terms of information, entertainment. Uh, so I think the, the next step is you know, the, 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 the public broadcaster must play what it is supposed to play as other public broadcasters have done in terms of restructure and face what is the uh, what the Egyptian people are facing right now. Egyptian people are hammered yes. with transnational broadcasting, carrying agendas, foreign agendas, and they have access to internet. There is no restriction over the internet. There are so many uh, uh, sites that specialized in criticizing the state and the leadership and the regime. And the same in broadcasting, transnational broadcasting. There are, you know, we, we have witnessed in the, past, uh, in the past two months, for example, like networks, uh, transnational, well established, well established, they're coming to us in Arabic, still they're making big mistakes, take, they attack the, uh, the, 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 the state and the uh, and the people uh, in addition of course to the regime so in this environment where is the position that we should take huh, to be able oh. not only to manage incredible the incredible uh, distribution of the media tools as you said and its impact on people you know it's uh, it's huge as well as to be able to compete with the mainstream media that coming to us from different parts of the world with different agendas. Yes. So right now, in fairness, and in contrast to many people who are saying this is controlled, 
No, it's not control, it's a position. And this position, if we go back six, seven years ago, I was over here talking about that this should be happening because it's very important that after the, 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 the revolutions, we need some stability uh, to be able to achieve development and progress. Exactly. And we'll stop here because this uh, coming report is exactly what you're speaking about here, sir. And we will continue with that traditional and social media and integration of values and goals. Let's watch. Egypt is a major regional media power. Its press is one of the most influential and widely read in the region. Its television and film industry supplies much of the Arab world with shows from its media production city. The introduction to the Internet in Egypt began in October 1993, a change that signaled another major transformation. Widespread access to the Internet and various forms of digital and social media, such as Facebook, meant that a new arena became available in which the public could express views, ideas, comment on everyday issues and discuss cultural, social, religious and various kinds of topics. The rate of change in Egyptian media has been much faster. There were 49.2 million Internet users, around 49.5% of the population, Right, welcome back and back to you, Dr. Amin. And uh, as we were speaking just before this uh, report uh, about uh, the media and the developments of uh, the media, now we're speaking about the traditional and the social media and uh, what do we need. What do we need from the traditional uh, in terms of the, uh, uh, of course, uh, the private and the public uh, media plus the social media what do we need from those from all those sectors in order to make a kind of an integration between all of them for a mission that should be carried out for the sake of our country okay uh, many voices they use media to uh, to reach and influence other people right now. Yeah. Uh, it is important to understand that, you know, the old media or traditional media uh, is going to be the same. No. The, the concept of media convergence is traditional media must have a presence over the digital platforms. All right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, your presence is very important. We understand that 9TV for example, is reaching to Europe and the United States to satellites. But also your presence, once you are, you are presenting 90V on the platform, it became a global network. It will reach out to everybody. That's what Canada, for example, they got rid of their specialized thematic reach out kind of channels because they put everything on the digital platforms. Okay, so people do have responsibility. All right, the responsibility of the people is the more they get aware of the threats that is really uh, affecting uh, their country. Mm. The most likely, the most likely, they will act more responsible. It's too bad that the people do not understand to a great deal that there are so many threats still exist and therefore they criticize their media uh, establishments. Uh, but then again, at a point of time, they will realize that without this positioning and without the public broadcaster, they will be suffering from greater threats. All right. So in this sense, again, uh, because it's not a, it's not appearing to people 
uh, who are doing this as a day-to-day -day business. Mm -hmm. But it's appealing for those who are doing research outside, with looking with what's really happening in the world and with other countries, with surrounding countries, with threats that is really uh, devastated countries around us. So people do have a responsibility. The media uh, also uh, have a, a responsibility. It's when, pe when people say the press freedom, yes, we have. We need a, a freedom and more freedom to the press. We need more, uh, you know. Responsible freedom. Uh, Absolutely. This is a German term. Do you know this? <laughs> okay. I thought the, you know you know about the German term, responsible freedom. It's very important, and uh, you know it's a, it's a science. So responsible freedom is not going to be passed to the people and the media. Responsible freedom freedom is a, is something that we need to work mm. and experience. So uh, uh, this is again through different challenges that we're gonna we face. We're facing and we will be facing. So yes, indeed, altering the uh, threats that uh, we are passing in the region, uh, regionally or uh, um, that is confronting our country is one mission. Propagating for our country mm. is another mission. Mm. Altering also or confronting false information and uh, uh, widespread mm. rumors is another. But also there are other important issues, including two uh, uh, two important ones: raising awareness of people mm -hmm. towards uh, what they um, yeah. what they are confronting, and the other one is working hand by hand with the plans of the government or the leadership in order to be able to be of a boost to the developmental plans and vision. How do you view that? How do you, how can we carry out this uh, 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 mission? In which way do we need, um, um, what paths do we need to, to, to address? What, what exactly or how exactly can we do this mission um, through our platforms? We are doing it. You know, we are, and, and there are certain measures. If we're talking about the, uh, the, uh, the Millennium Goals, are you talking about the millennium? No, I'm, I actually I'm talking about our vision, oh. not Your speaking vision. about the... Okay. <laughs> not my you know, vision, usually, no. I'm usually, speaking about the country, we, definitely. Usually, we, 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 we for... for, for uh, again, I can't put everything together, mm. because the, uh, the vision of uh, a public broadcaster is different than the vision of uh, a private uh, platform. Yes, indeed. Then, and so, but the, the, what, we, what we need to do is we need to look at the visions uh, and the missions and the strategic goals of all of all the players in the Egyptian sea. And then we see what's missing and how we can complement each other. This is one thing from a, from a media perspective. From the people perspective, we cannot really uh, uh, do more than to do public awareness campaigns uh, to make sure that people understand what is fake news and what is deep fake news and what is artificial intelligence and what are the threats so that they will take the facts from the mainstream media in Egypt as well as they look uh, to those who are references in the field of uh, media and information uh, to be able to get this information uh, you know, on daily basis, uh, without really following mm. those who are uh, creating rumors uh, and uh, that affecting public life, we are suffering. But we're not the only country that is suffering from this. You know, most of the countries of the world yes. are suffering from fake news and deep fake news. It's a, it's a, it's a common thing that we read about. So, uh, but what we need is we increase the public awareness. And we introduce this in different kinds of products and formats uh, and uh, introduce also media literacy in schools so even our children will know about this and get uh, be aware of it. Uh, there are so many different uh, tactics and strategies that could be Im implemented. I think it's uh, what we have achieved after the two revolutions 
and the different kinds of developmental projects, the major products that has costed billions and billions mm -hmm. of dollars mm -hmm. for the Egyptian people, that we need to shed light on this and we need to keep warning the people from getting into trap of fake news and the fake news. Mm -hmm. yeah. As well as, of course, uh, and providing information to the people. Because this is important. You know, if we have a rumors, and we have a system, by the way. We'll just to, we have a system from the State Information Service will identify the rumors and will, uh, you know, uh, will, yes. will, will, will bring the facts immediately to the people's attention. But the flow of information uh, to, to make the people aware of the facts of this, uh, the, uh, the, uh, that was, uh, you know, the, 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 to, to, to get rid of this rumor altogether is still, or needs to be developed to a point where we have a system that will shut down any rumors uh, immediately after it happened. Mm -hmm. Because I'm running out of time and I only have one minute here, I had too many questions to ask. But anyway, what is needed from our media to, uh, today? What, what is uh, the mission in, in the main while? For the public broadcaster, with all the, uh, the main channels, you need to focus on the information that is creating a public opinion and also addressing the main issues of the country. For the private and independent broadcasters, those who are carrying missions uh, should have also in, you, you can be specialized or thematic, but also you need to see what you need to bring to the people so that you can raise their public awareness with regard to uh, our strategic and developmental projects for uh, preparing Egypt for the future. For the social media, social media networks are doing fine because they are very diverse, but of course we need to look at those who are going to far extreme, whether right or left, and we need to go through a bell-shaped curve where social media uh, is uh, use, I'm not saying use, is delivering what, is, what social media needs to be delivering for the sake of a national and sustainable development of Egypt. Dr. Hussein Amin, Professor of Journalism and Mass Communication, we thank you so much for being sure. with us tonight. My pleasure, Mara. Thank you so much. I enjoyed it too. <laughs> thank you. Dear viewers, many thanks for watching. I hope um, we have uh, transmitted what uh, media needs at this uh, very particular uh, moment uh, Egypt is passing by. Tomorrow would be another debate with another colleague. Good night.